Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video from Buried One. In today's video we're going to be talking about the new GDDR6 coming to the 11 or 20 GTX series. But first of all we have a new couch in the studio and that is probably really nice. So leave a like button if you like the couch behind me. And also we're going to be on Chengiz Amsterdam tomorrow. So make sure you book your tickets really fast because it's tomorrow. Okay, so first of all, in today's video, as I said before, we're gonna show you the hash rate or potential hash rate of the GDDR6 memory graphics cards that are gonna be coming out pretty soon. So me and Troy made a calculation on the previous generation so we can calculate the next generation on their potential hash rate. So first of all, I'm gonna give you an example. We calculated every single memory bandwidth of the graphics card and we become to the mega hashes per second that it's actually doing on Ethereum. So it's a really kind of simple calculation, let's say, but we did it for you and I'm gonna show it to you. So first of all, for example, a GTX 1080 Ti was doing about 484 gigabytes per second and we calculated that it was potentially doing 62 mega hashes per second. But of course it was only doing 36, so we were like, what are we doing wrong? But now that the enlargement pill came out, we are on the 50 to 54 mark and that is actually really close to our calculation. It was 62, 54, that's about 20% less. But if we consider this same calculation on every single graphics card on this spreadsheet, we come to really awesome results. For a GTX 1070 Ti, it's about 32.6 mega per second. On a GTX 1070, that's about the same. And as we know, this is really accurate. On a GTX 1080, for example, with the S Largeman pill, we calculated 41 mega ashes per second, and yeah, it is 40 mega ashes per second. So this was like a breakthrough for me and Troy that we actually can calculate the potential hash rate on these graphics cards. We also made it for Vegas and RX 580s, but it's slightly different, but it's still the same. So what did we do wrong in our calculations in the first time that we were like, hey, this is not really worth it or this is not accurate. We took the stock hash rates of the graphics cards and we kind of compared them to the ones we calculated, let's say. So what did we notice is that actually the memory bandwidth is calculated on the maximum memory frequency. So the manufacturers, to be cool, they benchmark their graphics cards gigabytes per second or memory bandwidth with the maximum memory frequency they can run. So this actually means they overclock their memory in our eyes. Because what did they do for gamers? They downclocked the memory and said that this is the stock memory speed. And that actually means that the gamers are not going to be having troubles with crashing out or having threads stuck in driver. Gamers don't want blue screens, they want stability, so that is the reason why they downclock the memory and they're not going to have any flaws during gaming. So if we know that the memory bandwidth is the maximum memory frequency, we can actually see that this is the maximum hash rate your graphics card can do. So even the Tesla V100 should be able to do 150 mega hashes per second, but we know that these clock settings are locked. But the Titan V is capable of 90, I mean 83.7 mega hashes per second and 82 is the one that is the most close to it. So this is actually a very accurate calculation on all of these graphics cards. So now that we know that we have accurate results, we can take it down on the GDDR6 memory and the GTX 11 series and calculate the hash rates. But first of all, there's gonna be five different types. So first of all, they announced an eight gigabyte, 12, 16, 24, and even 32 gigabyte version on these graphics cards. So if we consider that there's gonna be a GTX 1160, 1170, 1180, and so on, we can see that the potential hash rate of an eight gigabyte version will be about 36.9 mega hashes per second. This is probably going to be for 1160s or so because that is the lowest memory type they're gonna use. Next up is a 12 gigabyte version. 
that is going to be about 55.4 mega ashes per second. So that's a huge increase. That's about the same as a GTX 1080 Ti right now. The 16 gigabyte version is going to be 73 mega ashes per second, and that is really high as well. So this is probably going to be the 1180 or so. And then we have the 24 gigabyte version that is going to run 110 mega ashes per second. That's probably going to be the 1180 Ti or so. And then the highest one we can get, the 32 gigabyte version, that is going to be 147 mega ashes per second. So the 147 mega ashes per second is probably the 1080 Ti or the new Titan V with GDDR6 memory, I have no idea. But if we consider that these graphics cards are going to have these hash rates, we can kind of see an improvement in profitability. But this is actually not true, because we have a second calculation that will tell you one other story. What is a calculation without the calculation of how much these graphics cards are gonna cost? Because if they are really expensive, what do you have on the higher hash rates? You will make more profit, but your return of investment will still be very long. So we considered that the previous, previous generation, the GTX 9 series, is pretty reasonable. So if we take the Titan X as a 100% price ratio, because it's the most expensive graphics card gamers are going to be buying, then the GTX 980 Ti was about 38% of its price. So about $450 compared to $1200 for the Titan X version. If we take the GTX 980 for example, it was about 32% of the price and so on. We calculated that for the 9 series and also for the 10 series and we also saw an increase in the price ratio compared to the 9 series because the chips are really harder to be made every single time the transistors are getting smaller and this process will cost you more because the printing time let's say will take longer so they will want you to pay extra money for that. So now that you know that the price ratio is higher at about 20% for every single graphics card and we consider that they are not increasing that price once again and they just follow the GTX 10 series we can expect a GTX 1180 Ti to be about $1750 or a GTX 1170 to be $1000 and a GTX 1160 series to be about $750 so this is so expensive that the return of investment will stay the same. So I'm going to tell you guys this. There is absolutely no threat of a GPU being worse at hash rates on Ethereum. So the Ethereum mining profitability will be about the same as a previous generation RX 470 or 1070. That is going to be really interesting because a lot of people were afraid that these new graphics cards would be so good at mining that it could throw away all their previous stuff. So let's give you a little summary over here because if you go for cheaper graphics cards with little less hash rate and a little bit less efficiency or you go for better efficiency, better hash rates but really expensive graphics cards, what would you choose? I think it's going to be the same so it's just up to you what you're going to be buying really soon but i think there's going to be a second gpu shortage because this will probably relax a lot of people and tell them like hey it's not really a big threat and there's going to be another gpu shortage when people start noticing like hey the return of investment on these graphics cards are going to be exactly the same so that is going to be really interesting so hopefully you all enjoyed this video today and hopefully i see you guys at Chengis amsterdam and i can meet you guys at once so see you guys in the next one